what about the user hive? I'll grab ntuser.dat. I'll create a file called user john txt. And I would like to run ntuser all. And I will rip it. Tells me two plugins completed with errors. Again, not so surprising. If I open this file, I can see what kind of information I can get. Once again, I can search based on the delimiter bar. Here I can see Adobe Reader is not installed. AOL Instant Messenger also not installed. Here is the Bitbucket information. Here I'm looking for certain malware, more malware. Do you have CCleaner installed? No, they do not. Checking for more malware. Yet again, more malware. I can get the user's environment variables. I can get Internet Explorer settings. Notice it says the user agent is Mozilla 4.0. More Internet Explorer information. Internet settings. Looking at their office documents most recently used. It detected that Office version 11 was found and that the budget XLS file was accessed. I have a printer for the XPS document writer. This user is not using Privoxy. If you're not familiar with Privoxy, it's a privacy oriented proxy. I can check their proxy settings. Again, depending on the nature of my investigation, this might be relevant. It could be that I want to know if they're using a proxy because I'm trying to look at their activity, or I might also wonder if some malware has sent them through a proxy. So those are both reasons why I might want to know about this information. Putty is a nice secure shell application that's commonly used on Windows systems. It's not installed. No one is logged in via RDP. Real Player is not installed. Real VNC is also not installed. And here we have some recent docs. And we have five different things stored at the top level. And then remember that we have all of the specific recently used documents for different document types. Contact, dat, doc, XLS, and folder. Folder is the only one that has two values in it. Checking for rootkits, didn't find any. Looking at most recently run applications. Shell folders values. Where does this user have various information that many applications care about? There's no Skype installed. It looks for SSH keys. None of them exist, so the user is not using SSH, at least that we can tell. Startup menu, Internet Applications. Notice that this user is smart. He has a default browser of Google Chrome. Some recently typed URLs. I see chromegoogle.com, which was preceded by chomegoogle.com. So a little misspelling there. And then Microsoft's little default homepage. So this user was smart. They realized that Internet Explorer is the number one browser for downloading a better browser. What's a better browser? Anything else, including Google Chrome. It appears as though this user only did one thing with Internet Explorer. He immediately downloaded Google Chrome. Here we have those user assist values. Remember these were those 
rot 13 encoded values, and now I can see command exe, run dll32 exe, regedit, windows mail, excel, winword, calculator, paint, etc. Here's the Vista bit bucket plugin. So this really means Vista and newer. Here's the location. And we see that nuke on delete has been set to zero. So when you delete files, they go to the recycle bin, as is the default. VMware player is not installed. VNC viewer also is apparently not installed. Warcraft 3 isn't there. WinRAR is not installed. Win Secure Copy, not installed. WinVNC, also not installed. WinZip, isn't there. So that is parsing through the user hive using Reg Ripper. So we've covered the main hives. Let's have a quick look at some of the others. So let's have a look at the security hive. We will rip it, and it's almost immediately done. Here we can get the audit policy, the SID for the security hive, and that's mostly it. So there's not a lot in this hive. As you can see, you're not going to get a ton of information. So we've covered the main hives and how you can use Reg Ripper in order to investigate them. There's some minor hives that you might want to look at, but honestly, they don't have anything that's of interest to us as forensic investigators. And we'll look at some other ways that you can examine Windows and Windows artifacts in some future videos. But that's all for this video, as always. If you're enjoying these videos here at Pentester Academy, please tell a friend. We'll see you soon.